must once again make clear that which most do not seem to understand. This podcast is marked as explicit, not because it offers a mature look into the world of topics not meant for the young or immature, but because it mucks about in very appalling, gormless, and tasteless filth whilst reveling in it. Cinema Psyops aims to drag you down into the very same muck filled with sexual deviancy and decayed morality. Cinema Psyops. They heap weekly praise on such filth while discussing the most base and animalistic urges, reviewing the lowest common denominator of low-grade trash ever considered film. of the world around you and you realize how little time you have left to be happy. Do you really want to waste that time you have left listening to Cinema Psyops? Cinema PsyOps. This episode represents 365 consecutive weeks of this ridiculous fucking podcast. I'm your host, Court, and the guy that's stunned that we now have enough episodes for you to listen to every day of the single year and still keep up weekly with us is my co-host, Matt. Eight years? Eight fucking years we've been doing this stupid show and we have learned nothing and gained friends and listeners and compadres so we haven't gained nothing but we've really accomplished nothing as a show other than I just mean, continuing to do it once a week 
Listen, there ain't nothing else going on in this world, all right? So who gives a shit if we learn anything? <laughs> I'm not here to learn, all right? <laughs> we have so little time left to be happy, so let's just do it talking about movies and fucking trying to enjoy what time we have left. Yeah, because I'm not here to learn. I'm not into it. I'm not, I'm not into learning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting that you say that, because my pabulum that I had uh, sort of scheduled or planned out for this week, this is the first year that I've been like, man, what do we do for that final run-up? This year, it's going to be episode 400 so we have about 17 weeks where we could do a final end of year run up and your life has been so busy lately i'm like you know i don't know if i want to do two and three movies at a time for some of these episodes like we've been doing because i just don't know if matt can handle that because he doesn't have a lot of free time right now i really don't (laughs) and i'm kind of wondering like i'm like well fucking how long is that gonna last because we're talking next summer is he still gonna have no free time i mean is he gonna survive that long are we still gonna have a show i mean what do i do how do i fucking plan this this is all stuff that goes through my anxiety ridden mind right? Same here. I'm wondering if I'll ever have free time again. You're not the only one whose anxiety-ridden mind is is fucking with him right now. So, uh, I hope next year things are different for me. Uh, you know, that's obviously the plan. Uh, I hope I'm not going like I'm going right now next year. If I have to be, I have to be, but ooh, I'd rather not, you know? Uh, cause I, I'm going like a, like a bat out of hell right now to try to take care of some things. Both part uh, one and part two, you are trying to get your life back in order like it's a meatloaf fucking album and it's just that much tragedy and opera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. That's, <laughs> that's about right on all the counts there. You pretty much summed it up. <laughs> well, I don't mean to rub it in or anything. Thing, but I'm finally getting situated with my life and thankfully my wife is also as well where financially speaking things are starting to look up for us and we may be able to be coming out of the darker side of the two or three years that I was living lean and like really really just trying to survive and make ends meet and just doing it in silence because it wasn't really anybody's fucking business so I I, yeah. I, I kind of know the feeling of what you're going through you're busting your ass to try and get a little extra comfort in life and just yes. you know, just break out and, and try and not feel so horrible and I I know that our audience feels that as well. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, it's my story ain't that different from anybody else's story. You know, shit, shit's rough all around. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. What we should probably do is plan ahead and try and just keep it to at least one movie an episode, maybe an episode or two where you have just a few movies in there. So there's a full yeah. franchise fest that's coming. It's on the 75. That's going to be like a three movie full franchise fest, and I may have to pull back on that and <laughs> try and find you a two movie one at best. But <laughs> You know, we always do that on the 75s. And then when we hit 400, uh, that's when we're going to do the end of the year run. And I have two box sets, right? I'm not going to say what they are, but I have two box sets of movies that we could break down. We could do like our very first box set breakdown where we just go through and review pretty much all of the movies in the box sets. We kind of have that set up already where the Nasty Habits box set that came from Sever and I, I pulled the trigger on that because it was all non-sploitation movies and there's four of them. So all right, well. we're, we're going to be running through those, but we're going to do those one episode at a time, right? Yeah. Of course. And then one episode at a time. Yeah. And then we're going to be doing eventually the Blood Island films this year, finally, which are like old school exploitation and sleaze from the Philippines. We're going to have we're going to have some fun this year and we're going to be watching some movies that some people are just going to be like, what the fuck? Not like our previous years. Most people weren't like, what the fuck? Where did they find that? Yeah, right. I'm still like, where the fuck did you find this particular movie? (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) This week's this week's uh, adventure is something else. (laughs) Right. It absolutely is. But before we get to that, I just want to cover this. All right. So this is. This is kind of your decision, right? So we're going to have sort of high-minded and thoughtfully put together box set with films that may or may not be more of an artistic flair and more thought-provoking type films, right? Yeah. So a little more highbrow, fewer list of films in here. So it would be easier to just separate them out and do one an episode and then maybe skip one or two of them and not have to worry about it. Or we have this giant box set of sleazy trash made on the lowest minuscule of budgets that will definitely be shorter films, but there's more of them, and they definitely get super sleazy. Now, in both box sets, we've already covered at least one film, so we're going to skip those, Yeah, and we're going to acknowledge it and then point it out to people that they can get our thoughts on that movie at that episode, so I I can take care of that. So basically, we've got packing them in and they're fucking sleazy and short and fun and cheap, or stretch them out and they're highbrow, maybe have to do one or two in a single episode, depending upon the length of the movies. Like, I'll try and keep them, like, if there's two hour length ones or shorter like that, then we'll do that in one episode and then the longer ones will spread out. So do you want highbrow or do you want cheap and trashy? (laughs) I think for right now we go cheap and trashy. Oh, dude. All right. So I did tell you it's more movies, but yeah, cheap and trashy seems to be the, the theme of the show anyway, basically. So it, 
it, it's a lot, you know, maybe more movies, but it's a lot easier to record those movies or, and do notes in those movies <laughs> in the given time I have. Yes, cheap and trashy. And we've already done one of these as well. So that's the shorter list. Now, there's like going to be like almost 28, 29 movies. So I don't know how we're going to make that work. We may just end up grabbing selections there from. There you go. And or we may just basically finish it up the next year, like where it just rolls yeah. over because it's just going to be a deep dive into this box set to celebrate our 400th episode. If it takes us into the next year, that's fine. I usually like to just close out the year at the end, but we'll see what we can do. So you're going to go with cheap and trashy because that is the sort of thing that you like to watch <laughs> and review. Yeah, I mean, it's the easiest one to review. I don't know about like to watch, but at least it's the easiest to review. Yeah, and I know some of these films are going to definitely be shorter, too, because it's literally yeah. like just get as much as you can shot to put it on the screen in the drive-in and get away with calling it a movie. And I think you're going to regret your choice by just going with cheap and trashy, but it's too late now. That's what we're doing. All right. Well, I mean, I was I think I would have regretted it either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been picking stuff lately that's been making you feel uncomfortable, like this week's films, Raiders of Atlantis or. Atlantis that, that Interceptors. That didn't make me feel uncomfortable, but man, this thing just fucking just didn't make any sense. <laughs> Would it help if I told you that it was an Italian-made action film? Would that make you feel better? Because you've seen movies I, like this before. I've kind of, I, I kind of knew that already. So yeah. I think it's just coming off of the whole Ring Juwan series, man. It's a, it's a culture shock. <laughs> well, I wanted to give you something fun and something yeah. slightly dumb and yes. something that just like defies all logic. And you know, like I said, I'm, you're not going to have to think too hard on this one. No, I did not think too hard on any of this. <laughs> this is Ruggiero Deodato of Cannibal Holocaust and a bunch of other type of flick fame he's done some excellent giallos i don't care what anybody says in his earlier career as well and uh he's done some films like this like just sort of this mindless action but hey sergio martino has done the same we did with outside the cinema i think we covered uh 2019 after the fall of new york and talked yeah. about that and that was like the the model where new york was flooded and stuff that they and showed sometimes you need uh, uh some mindless fun come on oh this was this was perfect this was this was the yeah. ginger to cleanse our palate between whatever else and uh we're gonna have a run of these Italian made like post apocalyptic or weird action films. This is not even, this is like apocalypse as it is happening where Atlanteans come back and just sack the planet. And with Raiders of Atlantis, I was thinking the opposite where it was going to be like Raiders of the Lost Ark where they go and find the city of Atlantis like, like, like Indiana Jones. You know, that's what I was thinking that we were going to do. They're going to adventure out there. And that's not necessarily the case. What we get here is a, a planetary civil war between sea dwelling peoples and people on the earth. Yeah. So it's, it's some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect for this kind of show. It's perfect to bring us into year eight, and it's just a shitload of dumb fun. And that's yeah. exactly what I wanted whenever I bought it, and it's exactly what I got. And I'm actually pretty pleased with it. Yeah, no shit. I am. I, hey, listen, it's a it's a good way to palate cleanse. Uh, I'll tell you that. You're not wrong there. Yeah, it is the ginger that we eat between our dinner and <laughs> our. <laughs> Yeah. Our, our desserts. So there we go. Right. <laughs> well, let's stop uh, fucking beating around the bush about talking about Raiders of Atlantis and Ray Garo Deodato's fucking madness. And let's just jump into it. We're going to start with a special message from our new owner and proprietor, Kevin, for Legion Podcast. And we'll have the Legion Patreon ad. And after that, this week, I just went with stuff that is basically either violence or talking about the fall of society and running scared. Or in some cases was just a kick-ass song that also deals with violence. But it all kind of fits in with Raiders of Atlantis because it makes absolutely no sense either. A first American Nightmare by the Misfits right after this. Hey everyone, this is Kevin. As many of you probably have heard, Bo will be heading back to school to become a teacher. Congratulations, Bo. As such, I'll be taking over the reins, managing and spreading the good word of Legion Podcasts. To kickstart things off... As an added thank you for patrons in June, Legion plans to have Steam Code giveaways for current Patreon backers. A random person will be picked from the Patreon every other week or twice per month, and the winners can choose from the available Steam Codes. Thank you so much for supporting Legion Podcast. You can reach me on Twitter or the Legion Discord group. My username is at LonelyBob. See you around. This will keep us quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? 
not that, but also yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. song's actually kind of about Charles Starkweather a little bit because it's talking about running on the highway and, you know, trying to get away after doing some murder and such and so forth. But being Glenn Danzig and Glenn just being Glenn, he kind of changed some of the facts up about the story just to suit himself. And it was just loosely inspired by the murder spree of Charles Starkweather, apparently. Of course. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, loosely inspired by action films and stories as Raiders of Atlantis. Why don't we talk about that? Right on. All right. Raiders of Atlantis, the first 20 minutes. We start with two guys. Uh, They kind of bust into this large mansion. Uh, They take some dudes out, and then they kidnap a dude. Uh, They meet their employer, the guy. The guy gives them- What the fuck is going on? (laughs) Yeah, I know. You're just- you, you, you start out all this, and they have to kidnap a guy. So you you don't know who's good or who's bad or what the hell's going this on. This movie immediately starts out like it's continuing immediately after the end of another film, and you're like, what yeah. the, what the fuck is going on? Why are they Wait, kidnapping what? this guy? Why are they killing all these people? Where are we at right now? <laughs> I love that it's just like, no, 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 never mind. We don't need to know why. Just enjoy the death. That's literally the plot of this film. No, 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 no. Don't worry about why. Just enjoy the death. Yeah, right. Just, just you know what? I- I- accept this and stop like looking into do it for any reason okay you just enjoy it why do you have to be so weird <laughs> absolutely so then the colonel or whoever who hired him pays him and they're on their way and tells him hey you might want to stay out of trouble he goes that's what we're gonna do and then they have some good old fun making fun of a guy because he decided to become muslim and tried to save himself um I so don't... his name's muhammad and yet they still call him by his other name which you should probably actually do that i mean it's extremely disrespectful and i know they're yeah. trying to play it up for comedy but uh with the right kind of eyes you can realize how this is belittling and not a camaraderie and a way of showing tribute to your friend yeah it's 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 pretty fucked up if Um, someone were to decide their gender was different and change their name because of that and you dead name them it's definitely disrespectful so in this case i'm going to say it's extremely disrespectful and fucking wrong to them to do their friend yeah it's mean it's a mean thing it's not nice they get on a boat and uh with their third partner and they're heading out and they're on the water then a helicopter comes out and the guy's like hey that's gotta be bill cook because Apparently, he's like, I just know him. That's Bill Cook who's flying that helicopter. <laughs> it's a shortcut this movie's doing where they're like, oh, my God, it's that famous adventurer coming this way. We yeah. just say that so we don't have to establish it. Yeah. Oh, my God. They do so much with that. Um, <laughs> hey, so, isn't, anyway. he that, isn't he that guy that got away with murdering his whole entire family just because of a technicality? <laughs> yes, but we can't do anything about it. We have to just stay here on the boat. So <laughs> It's literally the kind of bullshit they start saying. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, we come to a military base on the water and the helicopter, you know, 
of lands. And yes, it is Bill Cook. And he is greeted, uh, in, in, he is greeted by a professor. And we meet a very angry Dr. Rollins. And that is all in our first clip. Ah, uh, welcome aboard, Dr. Rollins. Aboard what? No one told you? Look, 12 hours ago, I was running a very important dig in Mazatlan. Then your cowboy and his pal shoved me in that rattle trap, and all he'll tell me is some cockamamie story about U.S. government business. Yes, in fact, we See what I mean? She bites. I'm terribly sorry, Dr. Rollins. Uh, you should take it up with the uh, Navy Department. I'll do a lot more than that if I don't get some answers. Like, where am I? Yes, of course. Approximately 68 degrees west, 24 degrees north. Dandy. And where does a PhD in pre-Columbian dialects come in? More to the point, how does she get off? Uh, if you just step inside, uh, uh, there's something we'd like you to see. It's fantastic. I've never seen anything like it. Where did you find it? 5,712 feet down. The spectrograph makes it about 12,000 years old. A lot older than anything you'd ever dig up in Mazatlan. And we've gotten you here to decipher the descriptions on that tablet. What's going on here? Who are you? <laughs> of course. I'm sorry. I'm Professor Sanders. Peter Sanders, nuclear physics. A couple of years ago, a Russian sub armed with nuclear missiles found her right underneath this rig. We're going to float it. What's this got to do with it? Well, that's what we're hoping you'll tell us. Peter Sanders of the long-known Peter Sanders clan. Yeah. <laughs> He's Peter those, Sanders the third. Those Sanders, I tell you. Um, the Sanders of studied, Peters. Yeah, she studies this little plaque and some other stuff, and she says the artifact might be even more important than the Rosetta Stone because it might prove the existence of Atlantis. Then they find something that they're looking for, and what it is is a Russian sub. They start raising it. Then we cut to some dude in a white suit. Goes, he opens up a safe and there's a clear skull mask in there. So, all right, cool. <laughs> what the uh, fuck is going on? <laughs> I don't know. At this point, I'm like, I'm like, did you like only give me half the movie? Are you just fucking with me at this point? <laughs> right. Like when I'm watching this, I'm like, is there something wrong with this disc? I have no idea what's going on. It's like this random happenstance group of scenes that really doesn't make any sense. And you just start kind of like, okay. And the more you get upset about it, the more violence they throw in that you forget about it. Yeah. They're like, don't worry about it. Here, uh, have, have a good time with this. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. I just, I had to stress that like at this point in the movie i'm still like what the fuck is going on yeah right it's like um how in the fuck how did we get here what road did we take to magically make us where the guy's putting on some clear skull mask that, <laughs> that, that he keeps that doesn't in his really safe. do anything i don't know what that's all about either <laughs> <laughs> right and he takes it out of his safe why is it so important that it needs to be in his safe why yeah i mean that is like the cheapest looking thing i've ever seen who, who needs that in a safe is it supposed to be a crystal skull because it doesn't look like a so crystal I think skull. it's supposed to be like glass or crystal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a crystal skull mask, it's supposed to be representative of something, right? But like what? Like horrificness. That's all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they basically were like, we need an excuse to make a Mad Max movie. But instead yeah. of being able to afford setting up the cheap desert props everywhere, we're just going to film it in the Philippines and make it that it comes up out of the ocean. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even mad at it. I'm just confused. Yep. Uh, then we cut back to the military base. Radar picking up weird shit from the ocean floor power starts going in and out uh the sea is going crazy then we see we're on the mainland and some peeps are we're just on land and some peeps are leaving their home and they see a huge like wave coming uh they start to get afraid and the lady couple gets almost sort of darted in the net and then we see this crazy looking mad max style gang being led by crystal skull dude and the other guy starts screaming no and that's the end of the first 20 minutes be confused <laughs> what the fuck is actually going on be confused <laughs> it's at this point when i'm 20 minutes into the film where i just kind of pause it for a moment to empty out my ice maker you know and get it get that ice into the freezer and make sure you know it's gonna last and all that and i sit back down and i'm getting ready to unpause the film and i'm like wondering if there is something wrong with the disc very seriously and then i kind of think about it and i'm like no i i remember 2019 the fall of new york and i remember some of the other italian made like the texas gladiators 2020 that we did ages ago where Joe Bob Briggs was hosting it and that made absolutely no sense. 
Yeah. And then I kind of realized that that's what we're getting. We got just an Italian action film that's just going to literally throw a bunch of set pieces at you like they do with their horror films that don't really meld together very well or make any sense. And you just kind of have to sit back and enjoy it. You know, I'm like, okay, this is going to be 2019 Fall of New York. This is going to be 2020 Texas Gladiators. You know, this is basically what's coming our way, you know, is that kind of Italian action film. So I relaxed myself a little bit, decided to have a couple granola bars and a glass of milk and just kind of enjoy without trying to really make any sense of it and you have to like if you make it to the first 20 minutes you have to make this decision here am i going to try and make this make sense or am i just going to sit back and enjoy the action set pieces coming my way because yeah, because, exactly. because if you choose path one you're not going to have a lot of fun but if you choose path two and you're just like you know what fuck this i'm just going to let them do what they do and enjoy whatever visual candy come in my way and stupid like storyless plot that they're going to wrap it in or I'm just not going to have fun. So I chose path two at this point, like at this 20 minutes, I'm like, this is not going to make sense. There is no reason for this to make sense. There's no need to try and figure out what's going on here. There's no greater mystery to unfold or resolve. It's all going to be right out there and it's going to be easy to figure out once we sort of get the idea of what story they're trying to tell. You're going to predict everything, but you're not going to realize the level of action you're about to see. Like I'm telling you this from the future me, (laughs) like you just have to sit through this. There's going to be a reason why people laud this film. The early days of podcasting, there was like a couple of podcasts that went nuts for this movie. Right. And they just oh, talked really? about, yeah, they talked about how crazy it was and how much fun it was in the action and, you know, that kind of thing. And there, there's, I think the Gentleman's Guide to Midnight Cinema were the ones that really went nuts about this, like years and years ago. Right. This yeah. is when it was still like only on bootleg could you get this. <laughs> right. So this release from Severin, it really kind of tickled my fancy and I wanted to see it. And so I knew it was going to be this crazy over the top action flick. But what's funny is my vague memory of the people that did talk about this way, way back in the day and how insane it was uh-huh. does not even compare to the movie we're about to get. No, yeah, this this gets crazy and it, it goes off the rails like right away. <laughs> it's an Italian made production shot in the Philippines on the cheap, but that doesn't take away from the amount of just insane, stupid action that gets taken place. Like any other film that's shot in the Philippines, the stunt people, there is no regard for their bodies and there's like no liability to the company for the stunt people to get hurt. They're literally so poor over there. They'll do anything for like, a, like so much money at this time. And so there's stuntmen getting hurt all the time just to get the money for their family. Well, that's now you've made it sad. Well, it's just part of the fucking history of shooting films in the Philippines that we have to deal with, like where there wasn't really much safety net for these folks and they didn't have very much regard for their own bodies and they would do this kind of crazy action film on the super cheap. All right. Yeah. And because it, that's just the dire need that the, the people were in. I don't know if it's that case anymore. Hopefully things are much better over there now. But at this point in time, like in the late 70s and early 80s, pretty much all the movies that are shot over there are shot on the cheap because they don't have to worry about liability for their stunt people. I got you. I mean, it doesn't seem right, but okay. Oh, it's exploitation at its absolute worst. And uh, there's a lot of people that shot in the Philippines that are guilty of that. And they have to reconcile that someday within their own mind. You know what I'm saying? Everyone will have to come to grips with that at some point. (laughs) We can move on after I bummed everybody out. Let's go on to the crazy action and wonder how many people actually did get hurt in this film. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, all right. We start the next 20 minutes. Um, uh, the wave hits. Everything's all fucked up now. No one can really do anything. Um, and they're all evacuating the base. Uh, the water's getting ready to hit. Um, then we go back to those three dudes in the boat from earlier. And, uh, they, they are trying to fucking keep the boat steady as this wave gets ready to hit. And as all of that's happening, we see a, what looks to be an island, uh, come up that has a dome on it. And the dome starts opening and it's causing a lot of noise and no one likes it. And everyone's like, what the hell is going on around here? <laughs> They don't explain so, how the island was surfacing. They don't explain where it was hiding below the surface, you know, uh, <laughs> in, uh, when it was on the bottom of the ocean floor or why the sub getting down on the ocean floor may have even caused this. There's no explanation at this point. It's just all of a sudden the fucking Legion of Doom fucking dome emerges from the goddamn ocean, causes a whole bunch of rifts and tsunamis and other crazy shit that's fucking up this boat and all this like environment around it. All a really cheap fucking model that's very clearly just a model, but they try and it's still fun. Yeah. 
I mean, at least people are trying around here. So, <laughs> like, you can already tell there is no budget for this film. And once again, you're no. either just going to let yourself have fun with it or you're going to be hoity toity and try and be, you know, just, <laughs> just talk shitty about it, which I'm kind of doing both. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, uh, later, after it's all done, uh, the dudes are trying to fix the boat and they see some folks that are kind of waterlogged. And we see that it's the professor, the doctor, and a few others, and Bill Cook all from the base. This Bill Cook guy, I've heard some really horrible things yeah. about him earlier, but I haven't seen yeah. anything. I've just heard. But now they're all friendly with one another. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> what do you want? That must mean that these guys are equally as bad if they talked about bad things that Bill Cook did and now they're all buddy-buddy and chummy-chummy with him giving him a beer and shit. Oh, no. Yeah, right? And only one beer, though. Just one. <laughs> you don't get any of that. Uh, other beer. The professor, he's pretty good with tinkering, and he gets the boat working. Uh, but as the engine works, no instrument works, so they don't really know where they're going. Uh, they're going in circles, and Mike decides to check on Kathy, sees how they're doing, and then all of a sudden, they hit something. Uh, Mike and Muhammad check it out, and Mike knows it's the island, it's San Pedro Island. And as Michael and Muhammad are checking it out, they hear screaming on the boat, and that is our next clip. What do I do, Manuel? Go, Manuel, have you gone crazy? Crazy? Kitty is ours. I'll kill you all. You got no choice, I warn you. You gotta die. Everybody, all of you. We gotta kill you all. You got no hope. Man, Memo, what in the hell are you doing? Kitty is gonna come with us. You gotta die, Mike. No mistake. I got to kill you. Why do you want to shoot me? You gotta die. Everybody, you gotta die. Manuel, we're your friends. We're no friends. No more. You can die, Mike. Understand us? You gotta die. You got no choice. No choice. We're your friends, Manuel. Come on. No you remember me? No choice. Ah! <laughs> Hell, Mike. What do you think got into the kid? Beats me. What do you want you for? His tattoo. Did you see it? It was like one of the symbols on the tablet. What's it mean? I've got, I've got an idea, but it's too incredible. <laughs> well, why the fuck did that guy just all of a sudden go nuts and decide to attack them? And no one knows why. I mean, we kind of find out later and we sort of figure it out, but like all of a sudden it just comes out of the blue. There's no setup. There's no like him looking shifty eyed around while everybody else is doing shit. It's just all of a sudden he goes from being completely calm and rational and getting a dude a beer on command. And then now he's trying to kidnap some fucking lady that's been there for a while already. Yeah. So not good. <laughs> the only thing that I can think of is he was biding his time to be able to get this kidnapping to happen with her, but it just, they didn't set it up like at all. It's just all of a sudden they cut to him having her held hostage and we're told that he had her held hostage and we don't even see him take her hostage or yeah. know what reason for at all like just deal with it basically yeah just de deal with it and have fun with it i guess i don't know <laughs> don't expect this to make sense but you know have a little fun that's fine yeah right just uh live with it they get onto the island, start checking it out, and they're just dead bodies everywhere, wreckage everywhere, you know, nothing good uh, anywhere. Um, they uh, they go into a katina, see a body hang in there, like, hitting a jukebox. They then start hearing the dude who tried to take Kathy from the boat, and he tells Mike to leave or they will kill them and to get to her. And as he's trying to tell Mike to leave, to leave, well, the gang kills that guy. Uh, Frank, one of the members of the group, not thinking and thinking that these people, they're like, oh, they're just regular people. They'll be reasonable and help us. He says something about how he's a priest and then he says, no more yeah. bloodshed, no more bloodshed, more, Yeah, please. brothers, no more bloodshed, no more bloodshed, come on. And as we've seen and, in previous Italian films, anyone who is a priest that is trying to beg people to be rational and not commit crimes never really works out for them. Yeah, yeah, never. As he gets up to the group, Crystal Skull guy pretty much hits him with, they all drive their bikes at him. One guy hits him in the face with the machete and another guy hits him in the, in the stomach with a machete, killing him. So, bye, Frank. <laughs> Ho hope you had fun. Yeah, I would recommend for anybody not to spend too much time getting attached to anyone in the main cast or any of yeah. the bad guys' main cast, because at, like, true drive-in uh, movie fair that Joe Bob used to say way, way back in the day, the main key is that anyone can die at any minute, and yeah. this film definitely allows that. 
Yes, it definitely does. It's like, hey, you are definitely going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's for stupid things like believing that you can talk to a bunch of people that look like rejects from Mad Max 2. Yeah, right. And it's like, you uh, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> the you, class uh, of, you should the, probably stop all that. Right. The class of Newcomb High is not impressed with your bullshit because that's yeah. also what they look like. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. They are. I, I, why would you think if a guy's wearing a clear crystal skull, he, he don't care about you. Uh, he's a. Uh, He's going to cause you some trouble. Yeah, he's riding around on a machine that has spikes protruding from it, and you think you can rationally try and talk him down from the mass amount of violence that he's already committed. Like, it looks like an entire city has already been slaughtered, and they've just landed right next to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty much. And that is exactly what happened. So anyway, after he gets done with all that, the group defends the cantina, and we get a pretty cool fight scene here. A lot of of murdering of uh, the bad guys. Uh, you know, using one gun, it's, uh, interesting, but, uh, it's amazing that our, our heroes are such dead shots that every single bullet seems to land. Not only that, they never seem to run out of bullets because somehow they always have enough. Yet you never yeah. see him change clips. And then later on, they get two shot guns that are like. Uh, yeah, they're good double barrel shotguns. Well, yeah. they're, they're not really shotguns because they have bullets, they say, but I guess they're supposed to be yeah, shotguns. Yeah, I think that's just. They are shotguns. I think bullets was just a. They could be problem elephant in guns. The translation. They could be elephant guns because elephant guns were like that, where they were just two shots, one in each barrel, and it was yeah. just a bullet the size of a shotgun shell. So it could be elephant guns because they were older. That is possible. Yeah. And if you can dead eye with those things, that's like caliber fucking bullet because it's supposed to take down an elephant in two shots only jesus christ yeah that, I, I remember those from uh tremors uh after defeating the you know defending the katana they kind of kill a lot of guys uh so everyone kind of just runs away um uh, they're like holy shit they're dead shots with one handgun yeah we're we're in a lot of trouble here everyone <laughs> so what if we guys... have flamethrowers and grenades these guys have one handgun yeah so one of the guys he decides he's gonna run out and he's gonna go ahead and scout the area well he doesn't notice a guy following him how he doesn't notice it i'll never know but whatever it's not my problem i guess so anywho uh <laughs> Some guy follows them. They look outside again, and they see that that guy has now been captured. We don't really see his death, but we get to assume it. <laughs> you um, do hear it, kind of. You hear people screaming yeah. in pain a lot. Yeah. He, uh, the group escapes out of the cantina. As they're outside, they set some traps. Uh, they hook some wire up. So that uh, when a biker goes around, he gets decapitated. And then they shoot a couple of more of them uh, and uh, before running away again and finding a warehouse. And that's the end of that 20 minutes. The decapitation of the biker was actually kind of cool, even though it yeah. looked cheap. They did it with enough quick cuts to where I was like, that was fun. Yeah, right. I was like, all right, that's all right. There's a couple other like head wound things where the fake heads are super obvious. At least this one with the decapitation. They yeah. film it in such a way to where it makes it somewhat believable. Yeah, right. It's a, I thought it looked pretty good for for being a the, the movie budget of what it had. Yeah. <laughs> it was really ambitious. I just also want to point out that if a transformer was sitting there and it hadn't been wired up yet, and then they had all that wire to wire up the transformer, that is way too thin of wire to actually wire up a transformer with, especially one of that size. Yeah, right. It's uh, that's a uh, I don't know that that doesn't make too much sense in the world. <laughs> right. I don't know what that wire was supposed to be there for but it was definitely not for that transformer it was way too thin yeah right it was like uh, i'm not so sure how that's working out i have a transformer behind my house a fourth of that size that has much bigger gauge wire hooked to it than that yeah so (laughs) it's it's an excuse for the bit and the transformer was there and they used it and it looked cool don't get me wrong but logistically speaking when you start to try and think about things in this film like i just did all you're gonna do is give yourself heartache and pain so just stop yeah just uh Uh, Just go ahead and settle it down. Everyone's going to be all right. Yeah, and try to ignore the fact that the Atlanteans are much worse at shooting than fucking stormtroopers. Not only that, do they forget that they have automatic weapons most of the time? Yeah, they they all just seem to... Yeah, they have a bunch as much aim as, well, nothing. As a stormtrooper shooting at an Ewok. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's sad. And our heroes are all crack shots. They fire bullets like at random, hit a bunch of different people like it's nothing. And they're just like total adventurers and heroes. I get what we're got 
got here, we've got basically an uh, invading force coming from under the ocean. This is essentially what the conservatives are afraid of, right? Like, this is yeah. what conservatives think is going to happen. This nebulous yes. thing that they have no idea where it came from that vaguely looks like humans but don't act like humans are just going to slaughter us all in our sleep one day. Th- that is, uh, yeah, that is exactly how they view that kind of shit. And it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> This is the kind of shit that Alex Jones was trying to teach his audience was going to happen to them and why they need to buy his supplements and food buckets. It, and also will turn the frogs gay, apparently. So. <laughs> right. Like, this is the level of, like, fuck about that is about yeah. to be found out <laughs> in yes, their world. Exactly. So <laughs> get fucked. <laughs> right. And you just, you watch this and you see how ridiculous this notion is. Yeah. And yet there are people out there that 100% would believe that this is going to happen to them somehow. But oh, they, yeah. They dread that it's from a land that's already known is what yeah, they think is going to happen. Hook, line, and sinker. Right. You know, but it's not, it's not too far of a push for some of these conspiracy theory nuts. It's to actually think that Atlantis will rise again one day and take over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They believe that. And they also, a lot of them believe the Earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, like, if you're coming into that mindset like that, this is the kind of movie that, like, a prepper's wet dream kind of deal. Yeah, right. So the next 20 minutes starts in the warehouse. They find some bottles of booze that they'll make Molotovs out of. And they find a couple of the double barrels. Uh, Mike gives Kathy his handgun, which has never been reloaded, but it doesn't need to be, apparently. It has unlimited guns, so that must be nice. Yes, it has unlimited shells inside, and as well as that small box that looked about the roughly the size of a double-sized shoebox, and the pockets of the gentleman uh, all apparently handle more than enough bullets to sustain them for the rest of the film on these yeah. two-shot, either elephant or shotgun, double barrels. Yeah, apparently, yeah. It's just like, what the fuck is going on around here? I'm assuming it's elephant gun because the distance that they have on this means that they have some kind of a shot that stays together to be able to puncture a hole through somebody at those longer distances where a shotgun would spread. Yeah. Unless they're slugs. Unless every single shell is a slug. I I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) Whatever it is. I'm just trying Um, to put some kind of logic behind these double barrel guns and how they're able to shoot the way that they shoot. Yeah, right. Well, later on, uh, the professor, uh, well, the gang gets attacked again, and right before Mike is killed, uh, Kathy kills a guy with his handgun. So, way to go, Kathy. They were arguing Um, she doesn't want to kill. She said she wasn't going to kill, and then she ended up doing it to save his life, which is just ridiculous. Like, you're justified in skipping it over, but I just wanted to point it out that it is ridiculous. (laughs) Yes, completely. <laughs> I love so, it. It's um, so dumb. Later I love on, it. the professor gets the lights working, and Mike finds three other survivors, and that's our next clip. You're not one of them. They'd have killed us by now. We thought we were the only ones left. You came to save us. Thank you. How long you been here? We've been here all night. It started yesterday. We, we were going to a cocktail party when all of a sudden... Everything went out. Phone, TV, current, everything. The generator is working now. Who are they? That's when the killing started. They just destroyed everything and anything in sight. I teach school. It, it was horrible. No pity, no emotion, just hatred. It was the same everywhere. People trying to escape from town. Most of them were caught on the roads by the gangs. Tortured, brutalized, murdered. I doubt that anyone got away. The interceptors are everywhere. Interceptors? Well, that's what they call themselves. I don't know why. Hey, just a second. What time did it start? Around 5.15 p.m. Right after the current went out. Same time the platform was wrecked. Look, I don't reckon we've got much of a chance. I'd like you to know my name at least, Larry Stoddard. I... We're gonna make it, Larry. We're definitely gonna make it. By the way, my name's Mike Ross. That's Professor Saunders. I'm Barbara Stoddard. Liza. don't believe you. Like I said, I find work relaxing. Yeah. Is that important? Yes, I might just be able to figure out what this craziness is all about. Yeah. Is it over now? Yeah. Hey, Mike! 
We have come back. Come back to the world that has always been ours. You have no place in it. You cannot defend yourselves. Our civilization does not accept intruders. We have returned to reestablish our presence. You have violated our world, and therefore you must be punished. All of you will be executed. All of you, except one. Means me. We hit it off right away. Yeah. We all hit it off right away. It's gotta be Kathy. Man, we'll say they're gonna come back and get her. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> okay, they told us a bunch of shit that would have been really awesome to be able to see instead of just cutting to the aftermath. Ordinarily, yeah. I would like the cutting to the aftermath, but there's so much that I already don't know what's going on. You know, we see the island rising and then the skull comes out and then all these people like immediately get activated. Were there Atlanteans that have been living on the surface in secret in case Atlantis was ever violated in some way, shape or form, which apparently the sub is what did that. So that's why they're attacking now. We get some explanation as to what's going on, but like, wouldn't it have been good to see them actually storm the city? We see the after effect of them hunting some of the people after the city's been destroyed but really they're just kind of shortcutting an apocalypse by saying that this happened instantaneously while they were stuck on the rough ocean of atlantis rising all these people were activated and were already there and already had all of these vehicles yet we hear later on that atlanteans were cut off and their technology was cut short yet they had all of these vehicles already and these guns and all this other stuff because if their stuff was cut short to where it's equal with ours then that means that they were several hundred years ahead of the rest of the planet yeah right Something. I, I, I mean, like, I just, I don't, what? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it means we don't know what the hell is going on, and we're not supposed to know. We're not important like that. <laughs> I feel like Frank Cross, after the ghost of Christmas past, just left me yeah, yeah, at, yeah. The fucking, at, at the fucking like dog show thing that I was working as a kid, you know, yeah, in my right, 20s. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, right. I'm that level of confused. I'm like at Frank Cross at the first ghost leaving me confused. Yeah. Right. It's like, holy shit. What? I mean, what in the hell is going on around here? <laughs> the more they try to explain what is actually happening, the more they just heap on stuff where you're like, wait, wait, what? No, that doesn't matter makes sense yeah right this movie is literally when someone tries to explain their conspiracy theory to you and like how they think that it's all connected yeah right <laughs> and what they think is going to happen this is like living through that fucking madness and ball of bullshit that people come up with it's, uh, it's a fucking weird ass thing man <laughs> I don't, I fucking, I'm so lost in this movie. I just don't know. I'm glad you are too, because I'm glad that you are acknowledging that, because seriously, yeah. dude, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I, at this point, I'm just like, I, 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 I'm running with it, but oh, fuck, it's hard. Uh, yeah, no kidding. And <laughs> anyway, <clip>. yeah. <laughs> the gang attacks again, and they repel him again, but not before Liza gets burnt alive by a guy, you know, with a fucking uh, flamethrower. They animated so, a dummy, and they took their time doing it where they animated that dummy. I mean, I was actually really impressed with how they did yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it was uh that was uh pretty impressive. Um it was a <laughs> yeah, they she moved it, it, it was a hard watch. You're like, "Ah, oh, you feel bad." <laughs> yeah, that but poor it, lady. It definitely worked though. Yeah. Yep. Um then they throw gas bombs, so the group has to move to the other side of the warehouse. They're quartered in an office, and Barbara, she gets shot with an arrow in the mouth, and that was not all that great. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cheap head I was mentioning earlier. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It looked bad. Yeah. It looked bad, and they should feel bad. Exactly. It's like, ah, what the hell was that? Um, what do you think you're trying what? to get away with here, movie? You're not tricking me. Yeah, right? After that, Kathy gets taken, and Muhammad and Mike go looking for her. Uh, as Mike's kind of going around he gets a uh attacked by another guy and then all of a sudden money drops and mike looks at it and the guy's like oh okay you're normal you like money so we're cool uh and he's apparently a normal dude as well so there you go um <laughs> yeah that's... greed greed makes everyone happy capitalism is what is okay in this film as long as you're a capitalist who is willing to hold on to money that may or may not be worth a damn since atlantis has sacked who knows how much of the planet yeah right but hey you're a capitalist and as long as you're not one of those stinking commies and uh, don't like the poor, then you're, you're good. <laughs> How uh, dare you try to socialize anything, you bastards. Exactly. Except for the stuff I you know, want to socialize. But we won't call it that. <laughs> we can move on now. I'm fine. Yeah. All right. So then the group gets back together, and that is our next clip. So Kathy was able to decipher what was on the tablet. What'd she find out? She discovered that the mythical Atlantis was destroyed during a civil war. 
And those who survived lost the secret to science and power. In her notes, she talks about a solar fire that destroyed everything. A solar fire? Yeah. Probably a kind of nuclear explosion. So that island we saw come up, that's what's left of Atlantis. What's that have to do with the Russian sub? It was the radiation from the sub caused the island to rise. Why they kidnap Kathy? Who knows? Maybe they need her knowledge. Obviously, they're determined to bring back Atlantis and all its magnificence. Crap. Professor, you think they took her to this island? It's possible. Hey, I know there's a chopper if you want. Listen, Mike, you're not seriously thinking of going to this Atlantis alone. Uh, no, he's not seriously thinking of going alone. You got it. Like I said, suicide. Here we come. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we figured out apparently why they want Kathy around. She can transcribe all the shit. So there you go. Either that or she's actually an Atlantean, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. But either way, it's what they, they want her because apparently she's super smart. Well, that's why anybody wants anyone is because they're super smart, right? That's the only it's, thing that people care about is how intelligent you are. God, would that be something? Thank God it's not, or else I would have no one. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, the group now somehow finds a bus, and, and apparently all the cops had the best fucking high-grade military machine guns you could possibly find. So now the group's armed. Well, now we know in our day and age that that actually is the case because of the militarization of our police. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty so believable. True. That's actually not wrong. So It's the most believable thing that we've seen in this movie yet. The, then, then the only th- reason why I don't believe it is that they're on a bus instead of like a major military fucking thing that they could drive. Yeah, that's the most unbelievable part is that they had to go get a bus instead of uh, like the Humvee that the cops actually have to bust open people's houses. Yeah, right. Um, so then as they're going to a chopper shows up, two guys hop on to the bus. Uh, one is shot right away. Another one before he is killed kills Larry. So now all three people who they found in that warehouse are now dead. It's almost like they're picking people up just so that they can be picked off one at a time. Like, it's just like everybody has to fucking die, pretty much. Yeah. Well, that's that whole thing, man. What's what's wrong with you? Like, any of these people are there specifically so that someone else can shout their name as they die. And yeah. we're supposed to feel sorry about them dying, but, like, we can't because it's just that we don't get the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then uh, more guys show up. They kill more of the guys and then blow up the chopper. Uh, they're coming up on a barricade. They run right through it, shooting tons more dudes. They get to a helicopter. As they're all loading up, Mike kills a lot more dudes, blows them up. And then they finally get onto the helicopter and they find the island. And the island itself, itself starts pulling them in. And that's the end of that 20 minutes before we go into the final 20. So really, that was kind of like 30 minutes is what we just did. <laughs> yeah, man, this fucking movie, without even any doing any kind of setup for the capability that the island's gonna like you know drop down other than they say that they're gonna try and make the island drop down they're all of a sudden trapped (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's it's all of a sudden now okay now oh no the island's got us what the hell are we gonna do (laughs) right help us there's a tractor beam what (laughs) what is that i don't know (laughs) (laughs) it feels like they're just making it up as they go along the actors are just improving the story and then the film just goes and shoots whatever they just said yeah, right. Uh, guys, uh, say stuff that sounds science fiction-y. You got it, boss. Uh, uh, tractor beams. Uh, lasers. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a bit confusing, to say the very least. It just doesn't want to try and give you any reasoning or make any sense at all about any of this. Yeah, right. It's just like, uh, we don't care. Uh, they definitely don't seem to. We can move on. Yeah, so you shouldn't either. The final 20 begins. They get to the island. There's more fighting, of course. They start fighting. Uh, other guys kill them. They then find the submarine and that is our final clip hey can't you chopper guys ever stay in line how do you figure that it's our sub the current blew us away carried the sub to shore if what the professor says is right i'll bet you nuclear missiles on that sub cause this island to rise now professor if you just utilize those missiles we'd all be out of trouble i'll bet yeah. It won't be easy, but maybe it's worth a try. Well, you do the best you can. Meanwhile, Washington, you and Bill stay with him. Professor, all I want you to do is concentrate on those missiles, all right? 
And I'm going to go look for Kathy. Mind a little company? Suit yourself. Phil. Yeah? If I'm not back by the time you're finished, take off with the house. Sure, Mike. I'll be with you. Only you can make it possible for us to return to the world we belong to on Atlantis. It can be done, but the danger of destruction is great. You have deciphered the tablet of knowledge. You know the key to our creation and how it must be used. Only for good. Only for good. Only for good. It doesn't really seem like the slaughter of millions, who knows how many of the Alanians were killing all around the Earth as this was happening, is using the tablet for good. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like it's only for good. Right. I just, what? What the fuck, yeah. movie? What What do they define as good? Because I'm pretty sure mass genocide of people just because they live above the surface of the ocean is not good. How dare you? What do you know about it? <laughs> <laughs> I just think that genocide in general should be considered a bad thing. Call me a hippie. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you peace-loving hippie. Why don't you go back to Woodstock, bro? You peacemongering son of a bitch. How dare you peace? It brings us peace. Currently, everyone kill it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, so then we get some more fighting. Uh, it's okay. So Mike goes to fire find Kathy. That weird guy's with him. Uh, I'm just going to take this in sections. This isn't necessarily in the order in which things happen, but this is what happened to each group now that we have separation. Uh, Mike and the guy, they go through the uh, jungle. They set some traps. It kills some of the bad guys. Uh, you know, wall of spikes, all of that. Uh, there's some shooting. And before we know it, weird dude with Mike gets shot in the back. Uh, and dies. Uh, then we cut to uh, Mohammed and Bill are attacked. They go through it. Bill gets shot. Uh, he still is able to take down two more guys after being shot before he falls and dies and causes Mohammed to have a bit of a paper clips moment in which he doesn't want to be left alone anymore. Then the professor, he fixes the nukes up. And when he crawls out and says, hey, I fixed him, uh, he's shot by a bad guy and he dies. Then we see Kathy. She accepts to be queen and will go to Atlantis uh, after solving some puzzles. Um Mike gets to this cave. He gets stopped by a uh, skull dude. Uh, they fight. He shatters the skull into the guy's face and another fake face type thing. Uh, yeah, the skull kind of covers up. up how fake it actually looks, but it's not bad. Yeah. Um, so uh, then Muhammad shows up. Uh, uh, Mike comes to this like uh, almost like little area and this head starts shooting lasers at him. Um, Muhammad joins Mike and he's able to destroy the head. And so they go into this hallway. Uh, they almost get sucked into a fan. Um, but they are able to get away from that. They find Kathy. They try to talk her out of doing anything. Like, uh, even though she's like, no. And she's like, Mike, I can't. I got to do this. And they're like, no, you don't. You don't have to. And then all of a sudden she starts closing up this island again. So they run to escape, which is what they want. Obviously, you want to enclose the people in there. Um, they run away. The guys get to the chopper. Kathy's already there in the back seat. Um, she seems to be in a trance, but then snaps out of it once they take off. Uh, then she starts kissing Mike and being like, hey, when are we going to go to dinner? And Muhammad's like, hey, can we wait till we get the fuck out of here? And everyone laughs. Roll credits. <laughs> the fuck man like what the fuck did we even just watch is this so the the island was possessing her and turning her into someone else and but mike was able to reach her apparently yeah through the power of kidnapping but they didn't even take her they didn't take her they just left <laughs> they left her there because they could tell the island was breaking down and when they got to the helicopter she was already there <laughs> And did you notice as the island was collapsing in and like starting to go that the dome didn't close completely? Does that mean all the Atlanteans are going to be drowned now or that wasn't intentional or was it intentional? Like, was it just bad effects or is that the story? Like, that's how I, they I'm going to go ahead and say it was bad effects. I don't think anything was intentionally done in this movie. <laughs> yeah. The dome didn't close enough and you could see the water coming in as it was going in reverse. You could totally see yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just, okay. I mean, but yeah. And then the whole nukes thing that never came back up. I mean, what, what, 
What happened there? <laughs> the more you try to think about the things that they're trying to tell you as the story of this film, the more confused you're going to be and the less you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I guess. They're yeah. really banking on that you are not going to pay that close of attention and you're just going to enjoy the plethora of gunfire that is on display here. Yeah, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just like, what in the hell? <laughs> I promised you you wouldn't have to think too hard at this one and uh, we definitely have accomplished that as long as you didn't try to figure this one out too much and make it make sense, you're fine. Yeah, right? You're just, hey, everything's okay now uh i hope everyone has a great day like listening back to your notes i'm like did that actually happen no that did actually happen in the movie yeah i just (laughs) all right cool i feel Um, like a goldfish when i'm watching this because like i can't remember what happened five seconds ago during the movie because it's constantly wiping your mind with more brainless action yeah exactly you just like i I don't really know what to do here uh i hope everyone had a great time uh (laughs) Right. That's exactly what this movie is. It just is just have a good time and watch all of the action and don't try to make it make too much sense because it's just not going to happen. It's not going to work. And you just have to accept the fact that you're going to have bikers beheaded by a wire that makes no sense as to why it's there other than to set up the biker being beheaded by the wire. <laughs> like everything yeah, is literally in service to the action set pieces and that they only put in enough story to loosely get you from one action set piece to the next. That's it. That's all this is about. Yeah, that's that's all that's all there is. So congratulations, everyone. If you sat through it, you, I don't know, you have a cookie. Uh, <laughs> you've earned it. <laughs> you've earned it. You earned it. You earned it. Take a day. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a shitload of fun, though. It's a lot of dumb fun, and it was a total blast. And this is the kind of movie that you put on for a bunch of people just to talk over and riff on and have a good time. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, that's yeah. the kind of thing that you would definitely... It's. It would be you don't so go into this trying to take it serious. <laughs> <laughs> right. Trying to review it like we did was the mistake. This is not how you yeah. watch the film. How you watch the film is with your good friend imbibing whatever intoxicants you like safely and just laughing at this shit yeah that's that's about it that's all you could do (laughs) i mean it's totally a party film that's kind of what a lot of italian cinema was set up to be is just have a good time and just you know laugh and that's it i mean in in a lot of cases that's what jallos were first intended to be but they got really mean-spirited instead (laughs) (laughs) i didn't tell you it was a good time yeah i had a blast i don't have any complaints at all why don't we just go ahead and finish this up with a quick news story and then we have a long enough episode to call it good for year eight's first episode sounds good all right we're gonna take a little break here i'm gonna play Queens, another one bites the dust because that is literally the story of this film. And when yeah, we come right. back, we'll do some Psyop news. Shit, the lyrics actually fit pretty well for that because they're talking about bullets flying through the door and shit. No shit. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> I just picked it because it was literally, you know, a bunch of people just dying and then the lyrics and another one's gone, another one's gone, another one bites the dust. That's literally what I was thinking about watching this movie. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's stop talking about how insane Raiders of Atlantis is and let's talk about how insane our real world is and give me some psyop news. Uh, this is going to come from our man Robert in the field. Although there are a lot of good articles right now on the site. So I, I just picked this one because I think the title's hilarious. Our man in the field, Robert. Thank you very much. He must have an incredibly long penis. There you go. This one's uh, for The Guardian. 
chess robot grabs and breaks finger of seven-year-old opponent. It's going to cost you some serious cock. Jesus, that's a weird one to use. (laughs) Anyway, Moscow incident occurred because child violated safety rules by taking turn too quickly, says official. I hate a toddler. Played by humans, chess is... (laughs) That's perfect. (laughs) Played by humans, chess is a game of strategic thinking, calm, concentration, and patient intellectual endeavor. My love of dead kids. Violence does not usually come into it. The same, it seems, cannot be said of machines. Last week, according to Russian media outlets, a chess-played robot, apparently unsettled by the quick responses of a seven-year-old boy, unceremoniously grabbed and broke his finger during a match in in the Moscow Open. The robot broke the child's finger, Sergei Lazarev, president of the Moscow Chess Federation, told the TASS news agency after the incident, adding that the machine had played many previous expeditions without upset. This is... Is, of course bad i got nothing for this <laughs> i got nothing for a slight robot uprising with impolite finger break there's no fucking yeah. clip for that we don't have anything that's not in our snappy repertoire <laughs> yeah mostly it's just talking about dick clips yeah <laughs> Uh, video of the 19, July 19th incident published by the Baza Telegram channel shows the boy's figure being pitched by the robotic arm for several seconds before a woman, followed by three men, rush in, free him, and usher him away. Sergei Smagin, how many Sergeys? Vice President of the Russian Chess Federation told Baza the robot appeared to pounce after it took one of the boy's pieces. Rather than waiting for the machine to complete its move, the boy opted for a quick, repo- re- re- quick, uh, uh, move uh, uh, ooh, for a quick move uh, he said there are certain safety rules and the child apparently violated him when he made his move he did not realize he first had to wait Smagin said this is an extremely rare case the first I can recall he added Lazarev had a different account but whoever he was we're pissed off <laughs> Lazarus had a different account saying the child had made a move and after that we need to give time for the robot to answer but the boy hurried and the robot grabbed him either way he said the robot suppliers were going to have to think again okay. Baza named the okay so did the kid get his finger just in the way of the robot or did the robot like artificial intelligence react to the fact that the kid was moving when he shouldn't have and I think it sounds like he lesson. reacted to that the kid was doing a movie shouldn't so he decided to break his finger <laughs> this, and i don't this, think he meant to break the finger i think he pinched the finger from what they said to hold him still and that probably but the force probably broke it <laughs> baza named the boy as christopher and said he was one of 30 best chess players of the russian capital in the under nines category people rushed to help and pulled out the finger uh pulled out the finger of the young player but the fracture could not be avoided, he said. Lazarev told Tass that Christopher, whose finger was put in a plaster cast, did not seem overly traumatized by the attack. The child played the very next day and finished the tournament, and volunteers uh, helped to record the moves, he said. His parents, however, have reportedly contacted the public prosecutor's office. Uh, we will communicate, figure out, and try to help in any way we can, he said. Uh, Smegan told RRA Novosti the incident was a coincidence and the robot was absolutely safe. That's usually what they say right before the robots take over. The machine, <laughs> which can play multiple matches at a time, had reportedly already played three on the day it was encountered Christopher. Uh, it, 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 three on the day, and, and when it encountered Christopher was unique, he said. It had performed many opens. Apparently, children need to be warmed. It, it happens. A Russian grandmaster, Sergei Karajekin, said the incident was no doubt due to some kind of software error or something, adding, this has never happened before. There are such accidents. I wish the boy good health. Christopher may have been lucky. While robots are becoming more and more sophisticated with the most modern models capable of not just interacting but actively cooperating with humans, most simply repeat the same basic actions. Grab, move, put down. And neither know, know nor care if people get in the way. According to one 2015 study, one person is killed each year by an industrial robot in the U.S. alone. Indeed, according to U.S. Occupational Safety Administration, most occupational accidents since 2000 involving robots have been fatalities. Robert Williams, widely considered the first, was crushed to death by an arm of a one-ton robot on Ford Michigan's production line in 1979. In 2015, a robot killed a 22-year-old contractor at one of Volkswagen German's plants, grabbing him and crushing him against a metal plate. 
Robots used in medical surgery were also held responsible for the deaths of 144 people between 2008 and 2013. More recently, Elaine Herzberg was killed by an Uber autonomous car that hit the 49-year-old at 40 miles per hour as she was crossing the road in Tempe, Arizona in 2018. Generally, however, human error, or a lack of human understanding of robot processes, is the most frequent cause. It pays to be careful around robots, even if they're only playing chess. There you go. So, basically, the kid moved. The robot reacted to it the best way that it yeah. knew how, meaning, hey, it's not your turn. Broke his yeah, finger. So, and yep. if the kid would have waited his turn, if they would have just basically had it go by, once the clock flips on the other side, you can't touch a piece. If the kid would have, like, basically just done that, the, yeah. the robot probably wouldn't have reacted in any way, shape, or form. So, the kid didn't follow the protocol, and the robot was just trying to correct that. And Are you a robot mistake. apologist? Yeah, absolutely. In this case, All I right. welcome the control of our robot overlords. <laughs> I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. <laughs> Listen, they're going by logic. If we teach them the right logic, it'll be fine. But unfortunately, we're teaching them our logic, which will make them maniacs. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> if we would teach them proper logic, they would be fine. It's You're just on the, the wrong planet for that. Yeah, we are just teaching them the wrong things. The problem with robots and artificial intelligence is not that it learns so perfectly. The problem is that it's what we are teaching it. And if we are teaching it to mimic our intelligence, intelligence we are teaching it to be madness yeah right like, hey what's going on here <laughs> Mad let's teach robots madness that's that's always good right like <laughs> the software and the programming does exactly what it's supposed to do especially yeah. with artificial intelligence and if we're trying to mimic our own intelligence the problem is us we need to be it's better it. to make our artificial intelligence be better it's always been us <laughs> <laughs> the problem has always been us matt and i think that's always. what westworld has been trying to teach us all along the tv series yeah. not the movies yeah, yeah. All day, every day. That's It's always been our fault. <laughs> oh, man. That is just perfect. A kid gets his fucking finger snapped by a chess robot for not waiting his turn. That's yep. that's the that's like pretty much encapsulates everything that I'm feeling about modern society. Te te teach your kids those uh, chess moves, all right, man? <laughs> and also the proper etiquette of don't touch yeah. the fucking chess pieces until you're... Teach your kids of the chess etiquette. Right. Don't fucking touch the chess pieces until your opponent hits the clock or just basically taps that they're done and they're not going to move anymore. Yeah, yeah. Or the robots might get more serious. This time it's a broken finger. Next time they're snatching that thing off. Yeah, you follow the rules that you set and everything will be fine with our robot overlords. Yeah, right? Jesus Christ. <laughs> and with that, we're going to play the Ending Legion show promo. And after that, we're going to have the damned covering Ballroom Blitz. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th get slayed the hell mean power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero go show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse pick six movies the podcast by the cemetery the podcast on haunted hill the psycho semantic podcast rick radio house of wax dude looks like the 80s rabbit and red radio the shade cast short bus cinema two drink minimum commentaries the vd clinic who will survive horror podcast and which versus the doomsday clock with such a widespread of shows there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with horror politics movies books sex music commentaries health video games kaiju action news comedy and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world we are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world check us out at www.legionpodcast.com Com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.
right? Everybody knows Ballroom Blitz, and it's no surprise because every fucking action sequence where someone gets killed is almost always set to some version of Ballroom Blitz anyway. That's true, but it's fun. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. It's what I think of when I think of just mindless action is the Ballroom uh, Blitz. Right? No shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to find the previous 364 instances where I have made an excuse to just play a song on my show that I really didn't need an excuse to. I can play anything I want. It's my show. Yeah, right? You don't need an excuse. And fuck them for thinking that uh, you need one. The 364 previous instances where I have justified and or just demanded that I shouldn't have to justify myself are all available. Legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. If you're just looking at your regular podcatcher feed, we're going to stop about 63 or so but I believe the other ones are still there on the internets for you to enjoy. If you actually wanted to go through 365 days of Cinema PsyOps up to this episode, you can do it now. Oof, that's rough. <laughs> if you are crazy that's, enough... That's a lot of us. Yeah, that's you, a lot for, of us. Yeah, once a day for us is like way too much, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's too much us for you. If you yeah, are, I wouldn't do this. If you are definitely crazy enough to even bother trying to do something that insane, let us know on the Legion Discord chat. There is an invite link in the actual show notes that you can use to join the Legion Discord chat. And I actually had somebody join not too long ago because they said I was talking about it on the show. And I hope you have a blast because we all have a lot of fun there. Uh, just talking movies and just being silly. Uh, Legion Discord chat. <laughs> Legion Discord chat. I'm really pushing it because I'm having way more fun over there than Facebook. And I may just be dropping off of Facebook a good bit after this. Well, that happens, man. Facebook's dying. Yeah, that's why I'm recommending the Discord chat to stay in contact with me. There's also the Instagram feed where you can get the memes. You don't even have to go to Facebook for that. Thrice daily, the memes are dumped right there. They go there first. So cinema underscore psyops, that's where you're going to get the workday meme drop. Oh, uh, yeah, because you need them memes. And listen, if you can't, how are you supposed to get through a workday without your memes? That's just... <laughs> That's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to go to the Instagram to subscribe, of course, they're still available on Facebook. I'll share them to the main page of Cinema PsyOps and then into the group of Cinema PsyOps. And then, of course, on my main feed as Court PsyOps, they all get shared there. And then I share them to about 12 other groups as well, just because I've been asked to do it and or not told to stop. Yeah, of course. Oh, man, this is where I usually tell everybody about my email, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com, and I come up with something witty and that makes sense and then it's super fun and ties the whole show together to close it out. But, I mean, we just covered Raiders of Atlantis and nothing means anything anymore, so kick the fuck out of this week and make it your (laughs) bitch. pause there made me feel a little nervous again um i'm getting know, the clips right? prepped right now why don't you go ahead and start recording on your side i'm just gonna pull them over to get ready to go uh, and i am recording one two three everything's coming through perfectly i'm assuming you already leveled these i know it's been a while since you've done clips so i yep. just want to make sure yep normalize limiter i did it all yay matt remembered how to do stuff i i, I remembered things <laughs> <laughs> Matt's not completely useless. Yeah. Wow. Let's let's hold off on that. <laughs> Fuck Matt. That, I mean, that's about right. Fuck you, Matt. I know. <laughs> hey, fuckers, religion's bullshit. God's not real. All right, so you're hearing all of that, and you yeah. are recording on your side? Yes. All right. Uh, um, I got all the clips. I just have to open up the clip stuff for uh, doing the show, which we're pretty much ready to go right after that. Word. On stupid fucking thing. Sometimes these take forever to load. All right, yeah. we're good. Ready to rock and roll, and here's the brand new theme. This is your fucking eight rolling now. Let's do it. <laughs> I think that's the way to frame the film. It's like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Who cares? It doesn't make sense. What are we going to do?
Um, <laughs> Try that shit with Muhammad Ali, right? Yeah, right. And he would have fucked you up. Try and call him Cassius Clay. See what happens. Fuck around yeah, yeah. and find out, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Clips are back, everybody! I know! The artifact might be even more important than the Rosetta Stone because it might prove the existence of Atlantis. Shut up, that software is invaluable. Yeah, right. how dare you? Rosetta Stone is pays for itself, for my sake. Uh, <laughs> I learned a lot of stuff for stuff from Rosetta Stone, how to speak other languages, just so I could do Juwan in Ringu. Uh, <laughs> there are some podcasters out there that would do that, and I admire their dedication, but also you ain't got the time for that shit. Yeah, I ain't got time for that. Listen, I barely can know my own language. I can't learn someone else. <laughs> I'm having trouble mastering my first language, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> do they have Rosetta Stone for English? Because I could probably use that. Alright. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing. I'm, I'm such a goddamn idiot. All right. Don't be so hard on yourself, man. Come on. <laughs> you don't get any of that uh, other beer, so <laughs> you, you just stop it. <laughs> Give him the well, but not just the well. Make him drink the... What's the, the, the spill guard thing that's in the tray? Yeah. <laughs> the leftover uh, booze in there. <laughs> something like that, I think, yeah. Give him that from the fucking bar on this boat. Jesus Christ. Um... <laughs> You're just going to give him one beer. That's pretty much the same thing as like, hey, you got to fucking drink the trough. Yeah, right. You got to. Sorry, bro. (laughs) (laughs) You can have just one beer. (laughs) We're on rations. One beer per person per lifetime. Yeah, right. Uh, Let's see here. (laughs) I'm like, uh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, trying to figure out where you are in a film where you don't know where you are while you're talking about the film is going to be real fun for you. Yeah, yeah, right. And it was yeah. just a bullet the size of a shotgun shell. So it could be elephant guns because they were older. That is possible. Yeah, and if you can dead eye with those things, that's like caliber fucking bullet because it's supposed to take down an elephant in two shots. Only oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, I, I remember those from uh, Tremors. <laughs> the elephant gun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people out there are like, oh, my God, they brought up Tremors. When are they going to do Tremors right now? Yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> we can move on. Yeah, when's Sorry. Tremors next? So. Fuck, Lord, when? When's it going to be my time? <laughs> when's it, yeah. <laughs> when, when it going to be my time? This is the kind of movie that, like, a prepper's wet dream kind of deal. Yeah, right. It's, uh, oh, my God. I'm, oh, I'm all prepped now in my underground cave. It's a flood. So, I'm, I'll be fine underground during a flood. <laughs> That's why you make sure that your cave is on higher ground in elevation than anywhere around you. Yeah, right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, they're not doing that. Um, <laughs> make sure your bunker's in the side of a mountain. <laughs> my favorite thing is seeing preppers who are prepping for a nuclear war, like an all-out exchange. I'm like, we have six weeks worth of food and water. And I'm like, great. And you're going to die after six weeks, slowly, painfully. You'll enjoy it. Well, it might scrub out some of the radiation with some rain, but let's move on. Oh. All right. <laughs> I had a sneeze that I thought was coming through, and then it did not. Uh, <laughs> Man, I hate sneeze fake outs. You feel so cheated. I know, right? It's like, oh, where's my release? Uh, <laughs> I got all tense for nothing. Clip. So, <laughs> <laughs> In both cases, actually. Um, let's see here. So. <laughs> do, 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 do. Green giant. Green giant. That's why anybody wants anyone is because they're super smart, right? That's the only thing that people care about is how intelligent you are. God, would that be something? Thank God it's not, or else I would have no one. Um, (laughs) In my (laughs) case, everybody would want me because I'm so full of myself. (laughs) You're just fucking... Well, I don't know. That doesn't mean you're intelligent. It just means you're full of yourself. (laughs) Oh, I don't know, man. I'm rather smart. You are. You're pretty smart, dude. Yeah. I'm just saying being full of yourself doesn't mean you're smart. I know plenty of dumbasses who are full of themselves. <laughs> I can think of four off the top of my head that we both know. Exactly. <laughs> All right. What's funny is any of our friends that actually listen to this show will be like, is he talking about me? I better not be one of They're talking about us? What the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong with you motherfuckers? Assholes. Um, yeah, because we're dicks.
something witty and that makes sense and is super fun and ties the whole show together to close it out. But I mean, we just covered Raiders of Atlantis and nothing means anything anymore. So kick the fuck out of this week and make it your pitch. <laughs> That's about the best way you could end that. <laughs> That's about the best way you could do any of that. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. And I am done recording as well because I'm just finished. <laughs>